Hi, thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, my name is Ken. I'm with Arizona Tenants Advocates, and we are going to be doing a series of classes on specific subject matter uh, relating to landlord tenant. Now, some of this will just be pursuant to applicable laws in Arizona, but if you're looking at this from some other state, they may apply to you. Other things that we will be doing will be just common sense issues, which, um, of course, the particulars of those may not be common sense to you, but what I mean by common sense is not necessarily legalistic uh, as relates to uh, landlord-tenant laws. Now, um, the issues here, I do suggest as a general rule that you look at the applicable statutes and the Arizona Tenants website does have a link to um, the Arizona Residential Landlord and Tenant Act. If you're out of state, outside the state of Arizona, you may want to look that up and compare it to your local laws. Um, and we'll go from there. Now, the, there's going to be a variety of subjects. The subject of today's class will be uh, giving notices to landlords or receiving, uh, in other words, how to send things and make sure they get there. Um, so we will be walking you through a variety of steps uh, pertaining to addressing envelopes, uh, using certified mail, getting to the post office, uh, some of the common mistakes people make, um, particulars of your lease, and so on. I will try to uh, provide you with uh, visual uh, documentation of some of these things uh, as we go along, and so on. Um, so we're gonna. This is might end up being a little bit. Um, these classes might end up being a little jerky as we do pauses and then come back online. Um, but it's a lot better, of course, than wasting your time waiting for me to find things. Okay, so we're gonna pause now and we'll get on to subject number one. Thank you. We are back now. This is a printout version of the Arizona Residential Landlord and Tenant Act. And it includes um, not only issues that are specifically identified that, but supplementary laws that are closely related, uh, such as about evictions or uh, other related issues, such as innkeepers uh, laws and so on. Uh, but primarily, we'll be focusing on the Residential Landlord and Tenant Act specifically in here. Uh, they put it all in one booklet. I don't know why. They just the way they do it. Um, these are available through um, as a download through our website as a link to the Arizona Residential Landlord Tenant Act or you can uh, if you're not able to print it out uh, you can call the Sec Arizona Secretary of State's office and order a copy I believe the number is 602-542-4086 for those who are visually oriented uh, let's see if we can um, do a close-up of the number here. Here it is on the inside of the booklet. See if you can get a close-up of that. We good. Okay. Now, um, giving notice to a landlord is covered under a variety of methods, many of which are not even mentioned in the Landlord Tenant Act because it was the provision that deals with specifically deals with notice uh, was created prior to the uh, uh, creation of the internet revolution okay and cell phones and so on um, so there's some issues that are particularly mentioned and then others you need to understand how they work even to the example that it was written, I believe the, the Landlord Tenant Act was uh, originally created um, in uh, uh, the 1970s before there was even express mail. <laughs> so the it, express mail is, mail is not uh, 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 referenced here. Now, the um, statute that applies for notices is the following. And we use the shorthand ARS. ARS stands for Arizona Revised Statutes. Okay? So ARS section 33-1313 subsection B deals with notices. And I'm going to open it up 
and uh, specifically um, uh, go over some of the elements of that, okay? So when does a person have notice? And I'm going to read this to you. A person has notice of a fact, and you can kind of read along here if you want. A person has notice of a fact if he has actual notice of it, has received a notice or notification of it, or from all the facts and circumstances known to him at the time in question, he has reason to know it exists. A person knows or has knowledge of a fact if he has actual knowledge of it. Duh. <laughs> okay. Um, now, a person notifies or gives notice or, of, or notification to another by taking steps reasonably calculated to inform the other in ordinary course whether or not the other actually comes to know of it. So if they try to notify you in a reasonable manner, you could say you have given a notice or tried. But in reality, in the state of Arizona and probably many other states, unless you have evidence of something, the courts as a rule don't consider it ever happened, especially if you're a tenant. If you're a landlord, you know, they, they cut you a lot of slack. But if you're a tenant, uh, you've got to basically CYA totally, okay? A, um, now, where does a tenant give notice to a landlord? Um, or how? It, a person receives when it comes to his attention, or in the case of a landlord particularly, it is delivered in hand or mailed by registered or certified mail to the place of business of the landlord through which the rental agreement was made, or, remember this is or, not um, at any, where, where, where was I? Or at any place held out by him as the place for receipt of the communication or delivered to any individual who is designated as an agent by section 33.13.22. Okay, let's analyze that and see what that all means. First of all, we know that registered or certified mail is good because they, they reference it here. Second of all, where do you send it? Okay, at, you can send it to the place where you created the rental agreement. Uh, it can be a, a realtor's office, for example, or uh, maybe you met a, an individual landlord at the property or at the landlord's house. Um, it could be through an agent that the landlord has designated um, under 1322. And I'm going to get into that the specifics of what that means at a later point in time during this um, class. But so it could be, or it could be somebody specifically designated in the lease. Okay? So you're always good, for example, if it's an apartment complex and you sign the lease at the apartment complex, you're always good sending it to the office. Okay? The um, you're always good sending it to the place that's designated in the lease unless it's modified you know since the lease was created I when the lease says that it wants to go out of state for example to where the notices are supposed to go but you know you have a right to send it to the uh, local apartment complex address for example I would do both just to go the extra mile of making sure it's delivered. Now the way you would do that is you could send, what we do is we will send the original notice to the place, the out of state place for example, uh, designated in the lease and then an extra copy uh, noted on, on our letter uh, is hand delivered for example or mailed to the local address. So if we're in a rush, for example, let's say we're dealing with uh, Morrison, Ecri, and Bart, which is a company out of Tucson and we are in Phoenix. Uh, their old leases uh, used to say send notices to the office and they would give the address in Tucson. So if we were in a rush to get notices to the landlord, we would send the notices by certified mail down to Tucson, um, but then we would use a process server to deliver uh, the local uh, copies uh, to the apartment complex and the process server would validate that it was delivered. So you could do immediate delivery 
with a, essentially a confirmation original delivered to the um, uh, to the um, uh, management company where they say it's supposed to go. Now I'm going to ask my help here, who's uh, who's uh, taping this, if this is comprehensible to her. Does that make sense? Say yes or no. Yes. Oh, thank you, Tara. <laughs> okay. Now, um, what else? Now, sometimes uh, a lease will say that notice is deemed delivered when mailed. And I'm going to uh, go and pull out a lease that says that right now. We're going to stop, and I'm going to pull out a lease that I just signed somebody up, and I'm going to show you provision. And there may be a similar provision in your lease, okay? And this is something we always check for. And it's going to be pertinent about what method of delivery you want to use. Okay, so we're going to stop here. And um, I will go gather that lease and come back and go over it. Okay. Okay. Back again. Now, um, I have pulled a lease from Equity Residential, which has a clause that I was mentioning. And it's lease provision number 29. So I'm going to go there right now. And uh, you might be able to zoom in on this while I um, talk to you about it, okay? Okay, and let's see if we can uh, get that here, okay? Now, are you getting it? Mm -hmm. Okay, provision number 29 entitled notices right here, okay? And they say notices are considered delivered when we send them to you via certified mail addressed to the premises or then they go on to personally handing it to you or someone else. So you got the considered delivered there. Then they go on to you, all notices from you, and they have the, the uh, converse of this, all notices from you, meaning the tenant, will be considered delivered when you put them in the U.S. mail addressed to the management office and send them via first class or certified mail, or when you personally deliver them, blah, blah, blah. So the issue here is you can send that to them on Friday or Saturday and they don't get it they don't actually receive it until Monday but legally according to the contractual terms they got it when you put it in the mail now we never use first class mail because you got no proof that you actually mailed it because there's no really tracking number to put on it and so on and I will go in later about how to put it on a tracking number on a letter but um, the, 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 the key point is it's deemed delivered under this clause um, when you mail it by certified mail. Now, the landlord has the similar clause in that, and I'm going to tell you why the landlord can't do the same thing, even though the lease says it is. The reason the landlord can't do it is because it's depriving you of your rights to receive the mail five days from when mailed. So we're going to backtrack to that, and I'm going to go to the very next paragraph, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to explain further how that's illegal. Okay? Now, getting to the Landlord-Tenant Act, which was ARS Section 33-13, I'm going to go pick it up. We come to the final section of sentence of ARS 33-1313, subsection B, which is yellow in here. So I want you to... to um, Try and uh, 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 zoom in on that. If a notice, if notice is mailed by registered or certified mail, the tenant or landlord is deemed to have received such notice on the date the notice is actually received by him, or five days after the notice is mailed, whichever occurs first. Okay. So the point being is. If you, if this clause were not in the let lease as it was in the case of equity, but if you don't have such a clause, when you mail a letter to a landlord, or vice versa, a landlord to you, even if you don't get it, whether it's refused or unclaimed or whatever, you don't get it, even if it's lost, it's deemed delivered, received by the recipient, five days from when mailed. So worst case scenario, you know, you mail it on Saturday, it's deemed Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 
it's 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 deemed received Thursday under this law. Okay, so that is a right that you have as a tenant to have that deem delivered um, to you and to the landlord. It's a right. Now we're going to come back to why the landlord's provision of considering delivered immediately to you when mailed is illegal. And I'm going to show you another law and hopefully you understand this, okay? Under ARS section 33-1315 entitled Prohibited Provisions in a Rental Agreements, subsection A a rental agreement shall not provide that the tenant does any of the following. 1. Agrees to waive or forego rights or remedies under this chapter. Okay, critical. And then you go to B. A provision that is prohibited by subsection A of this section and that is included in a rental agreement is unenforceable. Okay. So, what we have there is you have two elements. One, the uh, landlord, by saying you are deemed to receive something when he mails it, is taking away your rights. And he cannot legally put such a provision in a lease because your right is to have it deemed re delivered to you five days from when mailed. He can't take away those five days of deemed delivered by saying, okay, you got it as soon as I put it in the mail. He can't because it's taking away your rights. And if he does have that clause in there, it's unenforceable. We got to stop here because there's someone at the door.